Welcome back or welcome to the channel if it's your first time. Today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than usual. I'm not going to be talking about, you know, an update or giving an opinion, but I'm going to be giving advice because I have around 300 hours in McKay in Battlefield 2042, and that's of around 750 hours in the game in total. Now, I've spent over half of my playtime as this one character, so I've learned a thing or two on how to play him, and there's a reason that I do play him. So today, I'm going to be going over some tips and tricks for those McKay players who are looking to get into the character, or maybe are looking to improve. Going over gadgets, their passives, cosmetics, and their strategies. So let's get straight into it. First of all, let's get the obvious thing out the way. The main draw for McKay is his grapple hook, and this is in some ways his biggest asset. The grapple hook has had a little bit of a nerf in recent months, as it can't launch you as far as it used to, but it still is incredibly useful for getting on top of objectives and leveling out the playing field. For example, you're being shot at from the top of the discarded boat, you can make your way up there and shoot the person who originally had the height advantage on you. Use this device to get even ground on snipers who are trying to shoot you from high up positions, to launch yourself over objectives and land behind the enemy to pull off flanks, or to grapple on top of tanks, but we'll get onto that later on with the other gadgets. Overall, the grapple hook is one of your best assets and you need to be using it to effectively run McKay. Not to mention, if you're running as an effective squad, you can use McKay as a pretty good intel tool if you launch yourself up to a high up position and start spotting enemies for your team or calling out enemy locations in game modes like Hazard Zone. Especially on maps like Manifest, you can jump up to the top containers and get really powerful positions over your enemies that can only really be countered by a Sundance if they get a higher position than you and glide towards you. You can become basically untouchable in a lot of positions unless people get good grenade throws on you or other McKays come to take you down. So the lesson to be learned there is essentially use the grapple hook in the most creative and effective ways that you can find and experiment in different places. I use the same flanking routes a lot of the time with it and go to the same positions that I know will let me clear objectives and kill enemies. So yeah, experiment is my biggest piece of advice for the grapple hook. When running McKay, you'll probably also notice that you're an assault. That's a class you fit into, which gives you the self stim stick. This essentially just tops up your health if you're getting hurt. And it's one of the most useful things of being an assault. It helps you push because you can take out a couple enemies, dive into cover, regain all your health pretty quickly and jump back in again. This is pretty self explanatory. Just use it when you need a health top up and it does it fairly quickly. What people might not know is that you can actually have two of these at one time. Go and find yourself an ammo crate and it'll give you two med pens. You can only cap out with two and this doesn't stack past two, but it can help your pushes a lot when you're able to replenish your health twice in a row. Finishing off the gadget section, we have the throwables. Let's start with one of the most effective that personally I don't use, but you probably should, and that is C5. C5 is one of the most effective gadgets in all of 2042, and with McKay, it becomes even more lethal. Not only can you use your grapple hook to grapple up above enemies and then throw C5 onto them and kill hordes of them because it's no longer counted by Irish's APS, so all enemies, no matter where they are and what gadgets are around them, are susceptible to it, it's also a tank's worst nightmare. If you find a tank camping on a hill, you can grapple onto them, plant C5, run away and set it off and kill them effectively with little risk to yourself. The only thing you've got to watch out for for that is that if the tank is moving, chances are it'll kill you with a roadkill. However, use the C5 because it is incredibly effective against infantry and vehicles alike. It mostly becomes very effective against infantry and breakthrough, but there are other uses and conquests such as choke points where you can toss it in there and get a lot of kills. Aside from that, you've got your standard selection of frag grenades. These are good at rooting out enemy positions and also are very handy if you're, say, above an enemy as you've grappled above them. As I said before, same with the C5. The rest of your throwables like smokes and flashbangs are also very useful but mostly in breakthrough for making pushes. But smokes are always good for reviving a squad mate and you can always combine that with a grapple hook to send yourself flying into them and pressing the revive button because when you revive, it slows you down automatically so you don't slide past the person you're meant to be reviving. So that can be a good strat for getting your squad mates back up. In terms of other gadgets, the smoke launcher does the same thing, and unfortunately it's very underutilized, but in modes like Hazard Zone and also in Breakthrough, it can be used to either mask your last push towards extraction in Hazard Zone, or to mask a push in Breakthrough to win the day for your team. The breadth of the smoke grenade launcher is underutilized as hell, and it's really effective, so I'd recommend trying it out. Aside from that, you also have the Claymore, of course. This is really just quite pesky, and if you put them in a position like, say, above a ladder at a high up place, chances are a sniper's gonna walk into it. And you can reach those positions, once again, with McKay's grapple hook, of course. The last one is armor plates, and just don't be boring. 
don't use armor plates. What's the point? They have been nerfed now, so it doesn't cover your whole body, and that is good, but I still think these are the most boring and unnecessary gadgets in the entirety of 2042, and if I see you running them, I'm gonna disapprove. Now, some of you might be thinking, you're missing something, and that's right, I am. And I recorded this after the fact, because I kind of forgot about this, even though it's the best gadget McKay actually has at the moment, and that is the SPH Explosive Launcher. This is a sticky detonator that has four shots, can be refilled at ammo stations, and if you fire it anywhere near your target, they're dead. You can hit your target with them and it sticks to them and they're dead. If they run into their teammates, they're all dead. This is the most powerful explosive in the game right now and I recommend using it fully before it's nerfed, even though it feels a little bit scummy. Right, let's talk passives both for Assault and for McKay specifically. For McKay, you have a faster ADF strafe speed than the normal player. Essentially what this means is when you're aiming down your sights, when you're moving left and right, you are doing that faster than other players can, giving you a slight advantage in one-to-one -one combat. This used to be ridiculously powerful and overdone to hell and way too fast, but now it's actually a lot more balanced, but you still get that competitive edge with moving left and right against other players. This is most effective on mouse and keyboard, but it can be effective on console just to a lesser extent. But this is one of your biggest assets as well, adding to the mobility of this character that gives them the edge when you're fighting an enemy one on one. In bigger groups, obviously somebody's gonna eventually take you down, probably very quickly if there's two or three enemies, but you're still gonna be able to dodge a couple of bullets with this faster stray speed. On top of that, you have faster zipline speed too. You'll notice this as McKay when you're on a zipline, you're going faster than your teammates will, and this just allows you to traverse over ziplines that maybe would be too dangerous for a slower moving normal teammate or non McKay player. Both of these combined with the grapple hook make McKay a mobility powerhouse. And on top of this, you also get the assault's passive buff, which is extra magazine capacity for assault rifles. This is absolutely huge and can make your power positions last much, much longer when you get up to them. Because you have extra magazine capacity with guns like the RM68, which is absolutely broken at the moment, and for all of the other assault rifles in the game that can have drum mags, such as the SFAR or the AM40, making your mag pull absolutely massive. This can sustain you for ages and is especially helpful in Hazard Zone, where refill stations are few and far between and some random teammates just don't give you resupplies. Now let's pick the least important for last, which is cosmetics. After all that serious stuff, it's nice to just dress up your soldier how you like him. And McKay is one of the most versatile in terms of skins. I personally run the Deathbringer bundle combined with the war headgear, but the war headgear is no longer available as it was a timed exclusive, unfortunately. But the Deathbringer bundle is always there to use. And there are a lot of other headgears too that look pretty damn good. My only complaint with some of these, like the war headgear, is that it doesn't have any ear protection that I'd really like it to have. It feels a bit bare bones on the sides, but I do like having the nods. So it's a trade-off. If you have a specific way you like to run McKay visually, let me know in the comments below. And that wraps up everything for today's video. I hope you did enjoy. If you have any other comments to make about this character, or maybe you have another main, or maybe this has taught you something, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy, consider liking and subscribing as it's free and it helps me out more than you know. Once again, thanks for being here and I'll see you in the next one.